Welcome back to part 7. Alright, now is the time to make your projectile. If you don't want to make any projectiles, there are plenty to use in the Dreamiverse. Just be mindful of the logic associated with them. Once you've finished customizing your projectile, it'll be time to create some logic. We want the projectile to be grouped with the cube we made from the last video. To do that, first, turn off preview invisibility to see your cube. Next, grab your projectile and group it with the cube by pressing L1 and X. Now that it's grouped, we want to set up the logic for the projectile to go towards the middle of the cube. Get out a microchip and surface snap it on the projectile by holding L1 over it and pressing X. When you move the projectile, the microchip should be attached to it. Open the microchip and place down another microchip. I'm going to name this microchip Spawn as this will be the logic to determine where the projectile will spawn. Open that microchip and place down a timeline. I recommend resizing the timeline to make it short. You'll see why in a second. In this timeline, you want to place down a teleporter. Adjust it to about 2 frames. Now, exactly what are we teleporting to? Good question. We want this projectile to teleport to the top of the gun. In order to do this, we'll need a tag to teleport to. Exit this group for a brief second and go towards the puppet. Scope into the puppet until you're able to move the weapon by itself. Now get out a tag and surface snap it on the weapon, again by holding L1 and pressing X. If you're not using a weapon and only the puppet's hand, simply scope into the hand and place a tag there. Open the tags menu and look for the small white circle. We want to place this at the front of the gun. When you do that, name it whatever you'd like. I'm going to name it Spawn Position. Now exit this group and scope back into the projectiles group. We now have something to teleport to. Open the teleporter and press up or down on the directional pads to select the name you chose for the tag. Now, you don't have to press any of these buttons. You only want to match the target position, not the orientation. Let's unpause the scene and see where this spawns. This is a pretty good position. Don't worry about the projectile not facing the right way. We'll work on that here soon. Reset your scene and get out another microchip. I'm going to name this chip Follow as this will be the logic for the projectile to follow and look at the center of the cube. Open the microchip and place down a follower and look at Rotator. Now, before we continue, how will we determine what the projectile follows? Another good question. We'll use a tag for the cube. Place and surface snap a tag on the cube. Open the tag and name it. I'm going to name it target position. Now find the white circle. I strongly recommend using the grid for this part. Your cube may not be aligned with the grid. To align it, grab the cube and press triangle. When we do that, we can move the tag to the middle of the cube. 
be sure to grab the circle and press triangle to align that to the grid before doing anything else. Now that it's aligned, we can turn off the grid and finish the follow logic. Let's open the look at rotator first. You want to max out the rotation speed, the strength, and the overall dampening. Now go to the inputs and outputs section and find target position. We're going to connect the tag scene space transform from the cube to this. Before you close the look at rotator, you'll notice an arrow pointing out of the projectile. This will determine the direction the projectile faces when looking. This will be up to you depending on the type of projectile you have. I'm going to have it face this way. Once you're done with that, let's work on the follower. We don't know how fast we want the projectile to move, so for now, I'm going to set it at a pretty slow speed. We'll adjust it later on when we get all of the mechanics working. Make sure you max out the rotation strength and overall dampening. Also, look for the small white circle. Make sure that it's aligned to the center of the projectile or the shooting will not be accurate. Now go to the inputs and outputs section. Same as before, you want to connect the tag scene space transform from the cube into this port. Now, we want to see if the projectile moves to the center of the cube. This part can be a bit tricky depending on the type of projectile you have. For now, move the projectile to the center of the cube using the grid. After that, exit the group and go to the camera microchip in the puppet. Go to the emitter, open it, and press triangle over the cursor to reset it to default. We're doing this because the logic doesn't always update when adding new things to an emitted group, at least for me. Once you reset it to default, simply press X to select the cube again. Now we can test this to see if it works. Yes, it works. Of course it's not perfect. We still have a few things to add before it looks great, but it's coming together nicely. If it doesn't appear to go to the center of the cube, don't freak out. I'll explain how to fix that in the next video. And that's all for this one. Stay tuned for the next video. We're almost done. If you have any questions or concerns, be sure to let me know in the comment section.